the um, scripture, and you can follow along in your pew Bible. You'll see the pages are listed um, there for you. It's in the book of Acts, um, number 6, verses 1 through 7. Now during those days, when the disciples were increasing in numbers, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the, only, in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, who we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicantor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a prosthetic of Ant what is it? Of Antioch, sorry. And they had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Will you join me in a moment of silent reflection on that scripture? Amen. For most of my life, the idea of family truly challenged me. Not because I had a bad experience of family. On the contrary, I believe I had a wonderful experience with my immediate family. It was just that my experience of family was something that was defined in an ever-shrinking way. As a young child, when we lived on the East Coast, family was more than just the nuclear type. My grandparents all lived within a day's drive, and we would visit them with some regularity. So family had layers. Then when they moved to Florida, as all proper grandparents who live on the East Coast do, we would take family vacations to visit them. And those were great because that always meant that we would go to Disney World. But then we moved out here to California, and my family became much more narrowly defined. It was just me, my brother, my mother, and my father. My grandparents, at least a couple of them, were still in the picture, but we rarely ever saw them anymore. I mean, why go to Florida to go to Disney World if you live just down the five from Disneyland? We did have cousins in Ohio, but we almost never saw them. So when someone said family, what came to mind for me was that very specific group of four. And that was the case until my mother died, and then the group was three. And then my brother got married, and we were back to four. And then my father passed, and we were back to three. In all that time, family was defined not by mutual caring or even necessarily by blood, but rather by some combination of blood or marriage coupled with proximity. When I went to seminary in Kentucky, I went with a friend to a high school football game one Friday evening. You see, her uncle was the coach of one of the teams. When we arrived, something unsettling happened as I met well over 30 members of her family who had come from different areas of the state to attend this game. And from what I understood, this was a regular occurrence, and there could have been even more. The conclusion that I jumped to was that families were simply much bigger in Kentucky. <laughs> Fast forward to my wedding. Elena and I were married in the church in which she grew up. We had built into the ceremony a time for our families to stand up and affirm their support for our marriage. I joked with her when we were putting the ceremony together that it would mean that her family and maybe about five people on my side of the aisle would stand up because my brother and sister-in-law now had a daughter and my aunt and uncle came from Atlanta. So it might seem a little uneven, but we'd power through it anyway. Wouldn't you know I was right? It did seem slightly uneven, but the surprise was that when that time in the ceremony came and our families were asked to stand, there were more people standing on my side of the aisle 
than on hers. For you see, people stood who were family by choice. So there were the people I spent the holidays with for the past decade, those individuals who had become like brothers and sisters and surrogate aunts and uncles, those who had come to deeply care for me and now would care for Elena. It's an amazing thing that can happen when we allow people to self-identify as family. What we end up with is a group of people who love one another, support one another, and care about and for one another. And that can be an expansive group, to be sure. Now, I hope it occurs to all of us at this point that based on that definition of family, the church can and should be one expression of family in our lives. In a deeply theological sense, while we are not all connected by blood or marriage, we are connected by the bonds of mutual care and abiding love, and we are all linked to one another through Christ. One might look at the church in this way as the blessed community. For the longest times, I did not recognize the familial bond that lies at the core of that blessed community or really understand what that meant. Growing up, I think I took it for granted. But then, after my father was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer while serving a church in Central California, I saw this in action. I saw a congregation rally to offer the care that he needed and rise to the occasion as that level of care increased. I witnessed how one who had dedicated his life to the service of others was served by the very same people he had been serving as pastor. I felt the immense appreciation of a son who, due to physical distance, was unable to provide daily care, was reassured by others that his father would be taken care of. I saw a church being the church, walking alongside one of their own who faced the challenge of failing health and a loss of independence. This congregation blessed my father and blessed his sons by offering the necessary care while never demeaning him or expressing a single word of frustration. Truly an expression of the blessed community. This is just the same kind of care that those called to serve in our passage from Acts were chosen to provide. The leaders of the early church saw that something was missing in that fledgling church community. The care needs of the members of the family were not being met. Apparently, the leaders were focusing all of their attention on preaching and evangelizing and falling short in the pastoral care department. Now, being a preacher myself and understanding the attraction of public speaking, I will hesitate to condemn these early church leaders. I mean, I get the allure, and I applaud their awareness and their quick response to address the identified needs. Stephen and six others are called to ministries of care within the community, chosen to attend to the needs of the family. And the result of such decisive needs-based action as reported in our passage, is a dramatic increase in the number of disciples finding their way into the church. This makes so much sense, for aren't we all seeking a place in a community, seeking a sense of place among people with whom we can serve and be served, a sense of place among a church family where the needs of all are a concern for everyone? If we all want to just listen to some nice church music, we can always go online and download something on iTunes. Or if we want to hear a sermon, we control the internet for postings. We come to church seeking something more than just that. We come seeking an experience of community. A community of faith in which we experience God through music and the arts, through the word and through prayer. A community of learning in which we can ask questions and grow, and one in which our faith will be formed. A community of service in which we might find purpose and mission as we seek to be a part of meaningful change in our world. And a community of care where we can know that our needs will be met and we can help meet the needs of each member of that church family. 
Here at Manhattan Beach Community Church, I believe we are a family seeking to be such a community for all who come through our doors. In the past several weeks, we've talked about how we strive to embody these various aspects of blessing in our community, mission, the arts, faith formation, all important aspects of life together in this expression of the body of Christ. But a family has at its core a sense of mutual care. One of the values that lies at the heart of our faith is covenant. When we come together in this community of faith, this church family, we come together in covenant, and that covenant is based in relationship. And that relationship is grounded in the idea of mutual care. Without this, we will be unable to find a sense of connection. We will be unable to experience what it means to be a church family. The leaders of the early church knew this and acted to ensure that such ministries of care were engaged. And we too recognize this, and so we seek to provide caring ministries as well. For many years here at MBCC, one of the primary expressions of this broad ministerial category has been the work done by our visiting friends and health ministries. For many years, members of our church family have taken on the task of keeping in touch with those in our congregation who have found themselves in need of special attention, those facing limitations in their mobility, those who have been diagnosed with serious illness, those who have sustained significant injury among them. In response to these needs, our visiting friends and health ministries have provided home visitation, transportation assistance, and other essential services, ministries really, to help assure quality of life, mobility, and continued connection to the wider church community. For those who have been served, there is a deep and abiding sense of blessing, knowing that there are people looking out for them, assuring that they are taken care of. And for those offering these vital ministries, there is an equally meaningful experience of blessing, knowing that they have been permitted to share their gifts and their time with others in their church family. I think we far too often underestimate how meaningful it is for those offering ministry. We ignore the blessing of fulfillment that comes with finding purpose and a way to live out our faith's call to serve others. In recent times, as our congregation has grown, the needs of our congregation have also grown. And we find ourselves at a crossroads with our visiting friends ministry. Simply put, there is a need for more assistance. And each of us must take the time to prayerfully consider how we might feel called to be a part of the caring ministries of our congregation. Each of us has the power to bless those in our church family through our time and our attention. For each of us can contribute to the life of the blessed community. Now, if you've been around for the past several weeks, as Sue mentioned, you know that we have been focusing worship around the theme of blessed to be a blessing. You also know that each week I have been incorporating different pieces of music in the sermon. As I've been considering this week's theme of caring ministries, I wondered if I might find a good theme song for this aspect of our church family's life. I started off dutifully considering options from our hymnal, leaning on the everlasting arms, sister, let me be your servant, or even, Lord, I want to be a Christian. And while all of those are fine options, I think that this song might better capture the essence of the mutual blessing that is possible when we engage in the caring ministries of our congregation, when we truly embrace the call of our faith to mutual care. And this week, I invite you to join in.
to leave now I just might have a problem that you'd understand We all need somebody to leave Lean on me when you're not strong And I'll be your friend I'll help you carry on for It won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on Back to the bridge, you just call on me brother when you need a hand May we always be able to lean on one another in this expression of the blessed community that is this church family. Amen. Go from this place open to receiving the care of others and willing to offer care to those in need throughout your life.
and all whom you come in contact with. Amen.